Hey you guys, welcome back to See Mini Mom. And if you are new here, welcome to my kitchen. I am so excited to be partnering with my friend Carrie over at eatingonadime.com for today's video. This is going to be a crock pot freezer prep meal video. So stay tuned. Carrie is a wife, a mom, and a brilliant entrepreneur. She has a website, eatingonadime.com, that has thousands of visitors every day, plus a Facebook following of almost 3 million people. Carrie and I met almost 10 years ago when both of us were fostering and adopting. In fact, Carrie has eight children, so she knows just about as well as anybody the busyness of this season of life and how hectic it can be and how stressful it can be sometimes to try to get dinner on the table. In fact, she tells the story that she had this budding business, this website showing people all of these delicious recipes, how they could feed their families really great food, and yet she was still struggling to get dinner on the table every night for her own family. So Carrie and her sister Christina recently launched a new venture called the Lazy Day Cooking Club. Lazy Day Cooking Club is a subscription service and every month they drop 20 brand new crock pot recipes into their members dashboards. Members also get access to their clothes Facebook group where they go live and share tips and tricks. They also add bonus recipes to their Lazy Day Cooking Club website every week. Plus they have lots of extras like tutorials where they show you different ways that you can use the website. One of the features that I love about Lazy Day Cooking Club is the shopping list feature. So you can pick out the recipes that you want to make and it will automatically generate a shopping list for you. And then you can go view your shopping list and actually cross off the ingredients that you already have in your kitchen. And then you can print this shopping list to take with you to the store. I also like that it gives you the option to print both your shopping list and your menu. That way it will print out the recipes for you as well. But here's the big game changer. And I think what sets this apart from other recipe subscription services, Carrie and Christina actually write these recipes specifically for freezer prep. So they tell you exactly how to prepare these recipes for the freezer and what to do the day that you're going to cook them in your crock pot. And this is so helpful because we can actually prep multiple recipes at the same time and end up spending less time in the kitchen. I will leave a link to Lazy Day Cooking Club in the description box below. And thank you to Carrie so much for giving me a discount code for you guys. If you use the code MINDY50 at checkout, you will get 50% off of your first month of membership. Carrie reached out to me a few weeks ago and I've been super impressed with her website, but I feel like the proof is in the execution. So I'm going to prep six meals today. I picked out six recipes from the website. I'm going to prep them all at the same time. And I even am going to time myself. We're going to see how long it takes me to prep these meals for my family. All right, you guys, are you ready? <laughs> ready, set. I don't know how to start it. Go. The only meat that I need to cook for these recipes is some ground beef. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get that browning on the stove. And then I am going to go ahead and go through these recipes and get all of the spices out of my spice cabinet so that I have them ready to go. I am just chopping up all of the produce that I'm going to need for this. I've got two different kinds of onions, red and yellow, some garlic that I'm going to mince, and then also a red pepper. But I wanted to mention that if you are an Instant Pot person, Another thing that Carrie and Christina have done is give some instructions for how you can convert some of these recipes for the Instant Pot because almost all of them will work great in the Instant Pot as well. Okay, so I've got a lot of things prepped now and the first meal that I'm going to prepare is actually tonight's dinner. It is called Crock Pot Drunken Beef and Noodles. So I am gonna take a few other shortcuts while I prep these meals. And one of them for this dish is that I actually bought stew meat, which is already cut up. Stew meat, you know, might be different cuts of beef depending on the butcher, but a lot of times it is chopped or shoulder roast, which is what this recipe calls for. But the stew meat is already chopped up for me, so I'm gonna save myself a little time by using that. Wash, wash, wash our hands, wash, wash, wash our hands. Now it calls for some sliced onions. I actually looked for the frozen onion and pepper stir fry mix at the store and they didn't have any or otherwise I probably would have used that because when I've had this dish before, a lot of times it also has pepper. And I'm actually gonna mix up the sauce here in this mason jar. So it's got salt, thyme, black pepper, minced garlic, and I could have cut a really big corner and actually purchased my garlic already minced, but I just think it tastes so much better whenever I just press it myself. 
two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. We're gonna use the eyeball method, y'all. One, two. And then a 12 ounce dark beer. I didn't have any dark beer in the fridge. We're not huge consumers of dark beer around here. So I am using one of my husband's beers. This is his favorite. It's the Coop F5. He's an IPA fan. Coop is a, an Oklahoma brewery. And I just wanted to um, do this. I wanted to give it a good shake so that all of the spices and everything kind of mix. And I'm just gonna pour that in with the meat. I'm gonna pop it into the crock pot on low and let it cook all day. Oh, I almost forgot. It calls for two cups of beef broth. I'm only going to use one cup of water and a tablespoon of my beef broth base. It looks like this. I don't buy broth and cartons very often anymore because it is just such a pain in the butt to have to haul all of that through the checkout line. I am cutting down on the broth a little bit because I only bought three pounds of meat instead of four pounds of meat like the recipe calls for. But I'm gonna throw a cup of water in this. I'm gonna put it into the crock pot and let it cook on low until the meat is done. And then I will add a cornstarch slurry, which is just a little bit of cornstarch and water as the recipe indicates to kind of thicken the sauce. And when we're ready to eat it, we'll just eat this over egg noodles and it will be absolutely delicious, yummy. The next meal that I am prepping is called Crock-Pot Creamy Cowboy Soup. That is what the ground beef was for. So I have my cooked ground beef in here. And to that, I am adding a can of black beans. And by the way, I did open all of my cans for all of my recipes at the same time because it's just gonna save me so much time not having to go back and forth to the can opener. Half of this package of frozen corn, so about a cup of frozen corn. My diced red bell pepper. Diced onion minced garlic, one can of green chilies, some cumin, just a pinch of cayenne for my family, salt, pepper, and then this recipe actually calls for adding some diced potatoes on the day that you cook it, but I'm gonna take a little shortcut and I'm actually gonna add about two cups of these hash brown potatoes, about half this package or so. These are you know frozen diced potatoes, so I'm just gonna put them right here into the freezer prep. Whoop. Voila! I'm just gonna pop this into the freezer and all I have to do the day I wanna cook this is put this into my crock pot and yes, I did make sure that this container like fits in my crock pot so that when it freezes solid, it will fit in my crock pot. And then just add some chicken broth and some milk and a cornstarch slurry to thicken it up later on and you serve it with cheese and I think this will be a really delicious soup. Yay! I am prepping now a crock pot Asian shredded pork. So I'm making the marinade for it. And unfortunately this recipe got stuck to another one as I was getting stuff out. So I had to stop and get some of the ingredients out because I have forgotten. Now I this now this calls for a three pound pork shoulder chuck roast. Um, I can't find them that small because I always buy the bone in pork roast because I think that they're so much more flavorful. So this is gonna be a meal that's probably gonna feed us three times because it makes a lot of meat. So what I have in here is soy sauce, hoisin sauce, rice wine vinegar. I am subbing um, olive oil for sesame oil because I don't typically keep that on hand. I also have two tablespoons of brown sugar and then a couple of cloves of garlic, which I will press into this. And then I'm just going to pour this into the bag with my pork shoulder. Um, then it will be ready to freeze. And all I have to do is follow the cooking day instructions that are on the bottom whenever I'm ready to take it out. So this will basically act like a marinade with the pork shoulder. My last three recipes all involve chicken breast. So I went ahead and just put the chicken breast into the containers that I am going to freeze these in. Yes, I am reusing. <laughs> an ice cream container as a freezer container. I do want to get some, some containers that I can use over and over again, so I'm not using a bunch of like plastic bags every single time I do a freezer prep. These are freezer safe, they say so on the packaging, but I also know that these are freezer safe because they held frozen food at one time. <laughs> Don't worry, it's been rinsed out. We're not having any cookies and cream chicken soup. The first one is for a crock pot chicken carnita tacos and it calls for chicken breast, onion, two limes juiced, one orange juiced, and then it calls for some seasonings, cumin, oregano, some minced garlic, salt, and it does call for chipotle peppers, but I'm gonna have to leave those out because they did not have them in my grocery store. It also calls for some red onion that you're supposed to serve with it, I think, to make the tacos afterwards, but I'm gonna go ahead and toss that in here with the chicken as well. I feel like this is one of those super versatile recipes where you're just, you know, making shredded meat. So even though this is a taco recipe, this is probably something that we would eat over a baked potato, that we would make rice bowls out of. If you're trying to do the low carb thing, you could eat this 
once it's cooked over cauliflower rice as well. I think there's lots of possibilities for this, so this will be super easy. Next, we have a crock pot buffalo chicken chili. And I have actually um, not cooked with like buffalo flavor before. I know that it's um, pretty popular, but this will kind of be my first attempt at it. So I just got some onions that I'm putting in with my chicken, my two cans of white beans, the rest of my frozen corn, one can of Rotel, that's diced tomatoes with green chilies, pressing more garlic, yay, salt and pepper. I always think the fresh cracked black pepper tastes better. And of course, the namesake ingredient, buffalo sauce, half a cup. Ooh. I'm really hoping this isn't gonna be too spicy. I mean, my kids like spicy, okay? So I think it'll be fine. Now on cooking day, I will just pop this into the crock pot and I will just pop it in there frozen. It'll be frozen solid in this shape. And I will add some chicken broth and also a half a block of cream cheese. So that reminds me a lot of the chicken chili recipe that I make all the time for my family. It'll just be a slightly different flavor because we're using the buffalo sauce instead. So that'll be a nice little change. I'm guessing this would be really great too with a little cilantro if you like that on top, maybe some sour cream, some chips to go along with it, and of course some shredded cheese. The last chicken recipe that I am prepping is a crock pot creamy Tuscan tomato chicken pasta. This is one of those recipes where the meat and the sauce cook separately and then at the end you can add pasta. I think a lot of people don't realize that you can cook pasta in the crock pot. You just add it at the end. So you cook everything else and then about 30 minutes before you're ready to serve it, you dump in your pasta and as long as there's enough liquid in there to cook the pasta, it will cook and it won't overcook as long as you wait until the end to add it. So I've got my chicken breast, two tablespoons of butter, a can of diced tomatoes, some Italian seasoning, salt and pepper, and of course some minced garlic. Now I'm going to take one more shortcut with this meal prep, with this recipe, and that is that I'm going to use already cooked bacon. It calls for six slices of bacon, and I would normally buy fresh bacon, I would put it on a foil lined sheet, and put it in the oven at about 400 until it was done and then let it cool and chop it up. I would definitely do that if I was eating the bacon as bacon, if I was eating it in a sandwich or putting it in a wrap. I would also buy fresh bacon if I was like wrapping meat with it that I was going to cook on the grill or bake in the oven or something like that. But for this recipe, it's looking for the bacon to be a flavoring and it would not be using the drippings anyway if I was going to cook it from fresh bacon. So I'm just gonna chop this up and I'm gonna put it in the recipe and then I will still get the flavor of the bacon without having to do all the work of cooking it. Also, bacon's kind of messy, even making it on a cookie sheet. So I'll be glad to just use this and have less of a mess to clean up. All right, you guys, I have six meals prepped, one of them already going in the crock pot and five ready for the freezer. And it took me 58 minutes. Now that is with filming, that is with moving the camera around, that is with stopping to chat with you guys. I am also a clean as I go cook. I don't like to leave a lot of stuff out on my counter, so I'll put things away as I use them. I definitely think if I wasn't filming, I could probably cut that down to about 40 minutes. But still, less than an hour to get six meals ready. That's an average of like 10 minutes a meal. And now all I have to do is pop this into the crock pot the day that I want to cook it and just follow the cooking day instructions. See, Carrie and Christina have made it very easy. They tell you exactly what you need to do the day that you want to cook your meals. So I actually have these old photo album sleeves and I am taking the recipes and just slipping them in like that. And for the ones that I put in the tubs, I just tape them to the lid. And for the ones that are in the bag, I'm just stapling them right to the bag so that whenever I go to take these out of the freezer, it will tell me exactly what I need to do that day to have dinner ready in a snap. So I definitely think that those of you who are regular freezer meal preppers could probably do this a little bit faster than I did. I made a few mistakes. There were a few times when I forgot a few ingredients and I had to stop and go track those down in the pantry or the refrigerator. I was definitely taking more time trying to move the camera around and trying to get some shots of this or that. There were a few times when I had issues with the camera and I had to stop and start all over again. So I definitely think if you are not like doing this in front of camera for YouTube and really hindsight's 2020, I should have done this voiceover style, right? I just let the camera roll and then just come back and told you guys what I was doing. God, come on, Mindy, think. But six recipes prepped in under an hour, I think that's pretty good. And you guys, a lot of these recipes are going to feed my family for more than one meal. Almost all of these recipes, I can tell the way that they're prepped on cooking day are going to produce leftovers for my family. I actually think this is going to be nine or 10 nights worth of meals for my family whenever I take into consideration the leftovers that they will produce. So I am very pleased that I have six meals ready to go. My husband and I are leaving town for a vacation, so this is gonna be some really easy crock pot meals for the kids' grandparents to fix them while they're here watching them. 
Plus I've got some extras for when we get back and I'm like in that vacation haze and haven't really gotten back into the hang of things and I want some easy dinners for my family. So please go check out Carrie and Christina at the Lazy Day Cooking Club. Again, I will leave a link in the description box below. And if you use the code MINDY50, you will get 50% off of your first month. Plus if you sign up for the service and you decide that you don't like it within the first seven days, you can actually ask for a refund. So thank you again to Carrie and to Christina. And thanks again for watching you guys. I'll be sure to check in with another video very soon. Bye.